Hi, and welcome to the Black Starters Podcast, featuring stories of black business owners, leaders, and artists walking through their journey from the start through obstacles and onward to success. Powered by BlackStarters.com. And now, here's your host, Lauren Marie. Hey, Starters, Lauren here, and I am really excited about today's episode. I have a really fantastic guest with me. Miss Gwenisha Myers of Q's Cakes. But before we get into the interview, I want to say thank you to all the people who have been reaching out uh, on Facebook and also uh, via email. My email is lauren at blackstarters.com. I really appreciate the feedback and I've been getting so much encouragement there. So uh, please keep it up and be sure to give this podcast a five-star rating on iTunes and any feedback that you might have in the reviews. Uh, so let's just go ahead and jump into today's interview. Uh, Quinesha Myers. So tell me, um, what what do you do for work? What do you tell people that you do? You know, so it's funny. I just recently did some new business cards. And you know how you need to put like a title because everybody always put like cake artists or, you know, chef or whatever, pastry chef or whatever. I put dessert queen. And... Um, I, when I when I try to describe people what I truly do, I, I always tell people that I feel like I give them time back with my desserts because, you know, we we are so authentic in what we do, you know, making everything from scratch. So, uh, you know, so many people tell us that, you know, the things that they eat of ours, like our sweet potato pie reminds them of their grandmothers or whoever else that they've had. And so it kind of takes them on that that time trip, so to speak. And then we're also saving them time because, of course, you can go and you can make your own cake and everything. But it's nothing like being able to go and buy it and know that it's going to have the same love, the same quality um, that it you know it would have if you did it yourself. So yeah. I'm a dessert queen, and I give people uh, time through tasty treats. <laughs> <laughs> so have you always been in the like dessert and pastry industry, or have did you start somewhere else? What was your your first job, and then how did oh, you move gosh. into how did you move my into? first 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 job ever was um, I worked at this store when I was like 15, 16 years old called The Crate. And I was like a little sales associate. But what's crazy, I always tell people I was kind of uh, forced into the whole baking thing. Um, I've always been baking ever since I was whatever, you know, young. And, um, you know, over the years, I was baking for my friends and my family and doing different things. And so I, I, I say I had, but I still have the blog. I just don't use it because I'm lazy. But I have a blog and I would put pictures of cakes on there. And at the time I was working for Sara Lee, I was working in accounting for them. And I get this email from the city of Albuquerque about my illegal cupcake operation. And so I call the lady and she's like, you know, you can't sell cakes out of your home in the city and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm not selling anything. I just make them for my friends and family and put it on my blog. And so she was like, well, you do really good work. You should look into doing it as a business. So I took the class and everything. And a few months later, I found um, the guys that I started initially renting the commercial kitchen space from. And... um. So that was going along, you know, I was just doing it on the side, really trying to see if it's something I wanted to do for a living or if it was just something that I wanted to do for fun. Because when you commit to something like this, you have to go all in. Yeah. But whereas I had a regular job, I could say, look, sorry, I can't do your cake this weekend. I got to take my kids, you know, wherever. Um, so I got approached in 2013 by Albuquerque the Magazine. They featured my red velvet cheesecake and my cupcake bouquet in their Mother's Day guide. And it just took off. Like, my phone would not stop <laughs> ringing. And I'm trying to explain to people, like, well, you know, I rent a commercial kitchen space on, on the side. And I just do it on the weekends. And they were like, but we want this cake now. And I'm like, you can't have it now. And then that year. <laughs> you have to say, like, don't give me your money right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah. Like, and so then that year, they the, the Albuquerque the Magazine has, like, a voting where they vote, you know, for different categories so I got I got named a top five bakery without having a bakery so once again these people are like but you're a top five bakery I'm like I don't have a bakery son like seriously and so that was the push to get the store open and I finally opened the store in 2014 so yeah yeah. so how much time was it between um I guess like let's say the the point where you're featured in this magazine to when you opened 
I guess like quit the quit your full time and then went directly into owning your own shop. It was opening your it bakery. was less than a year because the Mother's Day guide hit in Mother's Day of 2013. And I opened my store the following year in 2014. So I would say about a year because once we got through all the construction and everything, it was right at a year. So a lot of times uh, in just like trying to start a business, people, the very first concern is uh, I can't do that. Like I don't have the money to, to open up a brick and mortar. Um, how, how did you go about the initial financing? And then um, would you go about it the same way today or would you do something different? Um. So... I was blessed in that um, my the money that I made at my um, job was my money because <laughs> my husband's in the military. So he took care of all the the day to day stuff. So I was able to just pretty much bank my paycheck all the time. Like mm-hmm. it was my money. So I had all that saved to, to pretty much buy everything I needed outright. And um, that's how I financed it. Uh, if I had to do it all over again. I would probably do the same thing. The only thing I would do differently, I would wait a little bit more before I left my job just to make sure I knew when we were opening. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Just because of that delay, it ate up a big chunk of the money that I had um, saved. And, you know, I think also I would I would like to I would have liked to have partnered with someone. I tried to. But, you know, people are just weird. (laughs) And. There's so many people who feel like they have to have everything to themselves, you know, um, which is which is strange because people, when they see that the name of the business is Q's Cakes is named after me, they think that I have to be in the forefront. And I'm not. A lot of times when people come into the store, I'm not there. They're like, where's Q uh, living? You know, <laughs> I don't have to be there all the time. And so there were times when I was in the process, I met other people who were doing something similar, like, Hey, maybe we could partner. And they were just like, no, I want to do my own thing, Mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, you know, it's, that's the only thing. If if I could have someone that I can truly, I could have truly partnered with, that would have, that would have been great because having that person to kind of like bounce ideas off of and to kind of carry that load would have been so, so helpful. And I have that now in my the one employee that I told you about initially, like I, I used to, I used to do about 99% of the baking now I do 20, 30% yeah. of, of it. If that, if that, because she has come in and taken over and done so much for me. So, um, so yeah, uh, I think I probably would have did that a little bit differently. <laughs> Uh, so, so in the midst of this whole process, you start, you said with, when, after quitting your job and then having the delay in construction and getting the paperwork and everything figured out, uh, there was some bit of like angst or tension that you were feeling. Can you talk a little bit about that stage of starting up and, uh, just get into maybe some thoughts that were in your head and, uh, how you handled those? You know, I think the the biggest thing, and I and I still have it now. You know, is just like, you know, it's one thing to like I said before, how I was able to just really tailor the orders to the weekend, and so I could kind of pick and choose, you know, what I could do and what I what I didn't do. And whereas, you know, when you have this full scale operation, you kind of want as much as you can get, but at the same time, you still want to be selective. But then you're like, I gotta pay bills. <laughs> so it's always this constant struggle of, okay, am I how am I going to get people in the door and keep those people too? Because you you have all these people who come and you know they're like, oh yeah, you're so great, and you might not see them ever again. So you really want to try to figure out a way to um, brand yourself and make yourself stand out so that people, whenever they think of cakes, they think of automatically cues cakes. Mm-hmm. So that's the hardest thing, and and then also. There's so much competition because they have like two main bakeries here. One has been around for forever and ever that everybody knows because their grandmother used to go to. And then the other one is like a chain. And so they have the the money behind them to promote themselves and kind of get out there. And then you have these little people who are illegally working out of their home like they thought I was, but I wasn't. And they, they come and they undercut you, you know, with your prices and everything. And so I think the biggest thing for me is that I, and I know it sounds cliche and I really hate saying it, but it's true. Like I always say, like what God has for me is for me. And 
I I always, you know, say that if if a customer is meant to be my customer, they're going to be my customer and they're going to know what they're getting from me and they're going to pay what I'm worth. And so I just have to kind of like block out the negative thoughts of, oh, my gosh, you know, because before, especially in the very beginning um, and with cakes, it's so hard to price things sometimes, especially if it's something that you've never done before. It's hard to say, like, how much work is going to take to do it. So what do you charge? And I used to cringe at, you know, sending some of those quotes because I'm like, oh, this is going to be a lot. But now, girl, I send that quote and keep it moving. You hear me? I don't even I don't even flinch. I don't hesitate. I don't care. I don't anymore because I'm like, listen, I'm worth it. I'm worth it. whatever I quote you. Trust me, it's worth it. And now, here's a quick word from our supporters. Hi, this is Dawn from Puka Pure and Simple. We're a line of natural handmade bath and body products. Come check us out at pukapureandsimple.com. And if you're trying to live a healthier life, join our Facebook group at The Best Life Tribe. Now, let's get back to the show. Going back to this idea that every person has something of value, be it through their thoughts and their ideas or through something physical that they can produce and to exactly. provide that to another person and and that they'll pay money for this like they're hard <laughs> earned money <laughs> listen girl some of these cakes i do i'm like i wouldn't even spend that much like but they people pay it and i'm like <laughs> all right let's do it like i have this one customer who um, she's an amazing woman. She's a lawyer and she, um, she's adopted several kids now. And every time she adopts them, um, she has like this big celebration for like hundreds of people. <laughs> and she orders these elaborate over the top cakes. And she usually ordered have her, has her assistant order it. And her assistant's like, okay, just here's the card number and, and run it. And that's it. Like they don't even blink. So what would you say in light of all these things uh, that you're most proud to have accomplished? You know, I think, honestly, I, I, it has really opened my eyes and, and really defined what success and failure is to me. Because I, before having my, my own business, I used to think, you know, failure was, okay, you try something, it doesn't work out, then that's a failure. But to me, Failing is not trying. So regardless of what happens with Cube's Cakes, whether I close, you know, years from now, whatever, I'm, I'm the fact that I did it is a huge accomplishment for me because so many people, and that's the amazing thing that I found in owning my business. You would not believe the conversations that I have with people who are older and they tell me, you know, when I was younger, I always wanted to do this or that, but I was so afraid. And so... To see somebody, you know, young like me and living my dream and taking like, because because when people fight. So here in Albuquerque, one of the best places to work for is is Sandia National Labs. And that's where I was before I ended up walking away. And so when people hear that I walked away from Sandia National Labs to open my own bakery, they're like, I, I mean, I literally have people say, you're the girl that left Sandia, right? <laughs> Because, you know, it's unheard of, you know, it's one of those places that people want to get in and they want to work Mm -hmm. for. And the fact that I was just able to walk away from it was just like, wow. And so that's that's what I think I'm most proud of is the fact that I did it. Like I I took all of that fear, all of that worry, everything, everything that went with it, all the stress, the tears and everything. And I and I did it. So to me, that's that's. That's what success is to me, is is doing it. <laughs> uh, so what what would you say is the number one thing holding aspiring business owners back? You know, um, I think of, uh, for a lot of people, especially for a lot of African-Americans, is really not having um, an example to follow. You know, it's so few of us that are in business that, You know, sometimes you need to see someone doing what you want to do in order to kind of make you think, oh, I can do this, too. And so I think for a lot of people, that's that's a big, big obstacle for them is just really seeing someone that they they can relate to that will um, inspire them and also will reach back and tell them, like, hey, you can you can do this. You can be, you know, this baker or whatever. And and that's my thing. Like, I feel I someone was asking recently about um, uh, 
the, the industry in general. And I feel like in the baking world, so to speak, in the cake artist world, um, African-Americans aren't represented. And so I'm really trying to change the face of that. Mm-hmm. So even um, with I'm bringing in cake artists to, to teach classes here at my store, the first five of them, they all black. Every last one of them, black, 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 black. And it's strategic. Mm-hmm. It is. Because I want, you know, p- kids to see that this is what you can do. And it's not just Miss Q. Because people, they know me here. And I'm probably one of like a handful that's doing it. But yeah, I want them to see that there's others out there just like me. Yeah. And that's so important. Uh, we're actually going to have to stop right there. And uh, I'm I'm just really impressed with the work that you're doing and uh, with your startup story and even just being so young, but giving back in such a big way. Um, congratulations on all of your success. Y'all be sure to check her out again at Q, the letter Q cakes.com. Uh, and she does deliver. So buy a cake and uh, taste the wonderful things that she's been talking about over the last 15 or so minutes. Um, also be sure to check out blackstarters.com. You'll find the show links there and you'll also find resources there to grow your business. All right, that's it. Uh, Give me a five-star rating and review, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to the Black Starters Podcast. For more exclusive content, don't forget to log on to blackstarters.com. There you can find all our social media sites. And if you like this episode, don't forget to leave a five-star review, comment, and share.